you've not met me before, my name's Lisa, Lisa French. I'm a hypnotherapist and also work part-time in an office at the moment, working from home in both of my jobs. So today's video is how to make pancakes in a nice circular shape. I hadn't realised that some people were struggling with this, but I've heard things like where oh, it ends up as scrambled egg and, and things like that and various different things I think that people experience and I've not had that problem and so Claire this video is for you thank you very much for asking me to, to make this video Claire is a WW a Weight Watchers coach and she asked me to make this video so this is for you Claire and for everybody else out there who has been finding it difficult to make pancakes. I've got a couple of other videos about actually making the pancakes, the, the mixture and the recipe and that kind of thing. So I'll link those above during this video. And it really got me thinking because I was thinking, well, what, what do I do differently to, to other people perhaps who are finding this, this difficult? So, having had a thought about it, I've come up with these ideas and suggestions in this video. It might be that you've got some tips of your own. If you have, do please comment below. And also, if you do like this video, do click the thumbs up for me, because that actually does make a huge difference within YouTube algorithms. So, I'd be really grateful if you were to do that for me. Okay, so let's get started. So, I think probably... When I thought about this, I thought, well, first thing would be the recipe that you use. And my favourite recipe for pancakes is the WW Banana and Oat Pancakes. And that's the mixture that I've got in here. The next thing I would say that impacts the shape of the pancakes is the, the texture and the fluidity of the mixture. So that's an important consideration. And you can see this is fairly fluid, but it, it does vary on different days because eggs are different sizes, bananas are different sizes. So, but it, it generally kind of works at that, that kind of consistency. The third thing, you can see that I actually make my mixture in a jug and that enables me to pour it into the frying pan Alternatively, I imagine you could use a ladle. She got one to hand. She? So something like that might be quite a good way. So that's something that I do that I feel impacts. So let's get started, shall we? Because there's there's other things along the way. I use vegetable spray. I mean, different people have different things that, that they use. And what I do is I just spray probably five times into my frying pan. I use a non-stick frying pan. Again, different things different people have. And then I turn it on to what I would say is low, medium heat or high, low however you want to look at it. So that kind of seems to work. I use gas. Again, that works for me. We don't have a lot of choice about most of us. We have one hob and it, it is what it is. But, but I do use gas and I think gas is, probably does contribute to making it easier to do really because as I say, I kind of I wasn't really aware that other people were, were struggling with this. The other thing that came to mind when I was thinking, I, I do actually have a, an honours degree in catering management, so it might be that some of that has rubbed off on me. I spent a bit of time working in, in catering before I did my degree and during my degree, and I've been cooking sometimes more than others during my life. Not that much myself. Till I discovered Weight Watchers, but that's a whole other story. It has really enabled me to enjoy cooking for myself. It really, really has. The recipes are really reliable, they work out really well, and they're just really very straightforward. 
and I find it very reassuring to know that the recipes are created with our well-being in mind because that is just such an important thing to me. So kind of heat up the oil like that. What I do is I just do a bit of that just to kind of spread it around and then this bit actually might be a bit more difficult for you to see but I do have a jug and so I pour four little pancakes around the edge and if you imagine a clock I do one at 12, one at 6, one at 3 and one at 9. And you can hear that sizzling. That's a good sign that the pan is the right temperature. I love these. This is my most cooked recipe of all the Weight Watchers recipes. So I do the four around the edge. And then I usually do a little one in the middle as well. Okay. Now I think this part is quite important. It's a relax and breathe moment. Waiting for the pancakes to cook on one side. And what happens while you're cooking them is that they develop air bubbles and that is an indication that they are ready to be turned over. I have actually got my gas a little bit too high actually and I just know that from experience because I've made these as I say an awful lot. It's my kind of once a week treat really, usually at weekends. Now I'm working at home, sometimes I make them before work in the morning. So let's turn that down a little bit. So I am going to show you this might affect the shape of the pancakes, but anyway, as the key part is you learning, <laughs> it's, uh, let's take a chance. Right, so you can see all the bubbles in there, and so that is the time to turn. I'm going to take that off the heat a bit now, because I have overcooked them. <laughs> so, this I think also is key, this is from Ikea, and can you see how thin it is? And so I think that's a, a big help as well. And so what I do, very confidently actually when you do it, just literally underneath one of them, lift it up like that, flip it over. And I work down the pan one at a time. And you can see they lift up quite easily when they are properly cooked on the other side. And I think that's the key. And so next one down. And then this final one over here. And these are lifting up particularly easy because I have the overcooked them. So that goes into there. And then back on the heat. Waiting for the other side to cook. Another relax and breathe moment. Don't need to interfere with them. There's nothing that we need to do. And they just cook. The other thing I think perhaps makes a difference, when I'm making the mixture, the hand blender that I use, it's a Bamex hand blender. I mean, whether or not it makes a difference or not, they're sold as you know, one of the top hand blenders and they do cost 200 pounds. You can buy something similar in Asda for six pounds. I think it does put quite a lot of air into the mixture and it just takes a few seconds literally to to, um, to mix up the mixture. So whether that contributes as well, I don't know. Right, so when they're cooked on the other side, what I do is I hug them out and I put them on a, I just want to say a clove there then, <laughs> where that came from, a, uh, a wire rack to cool. the first batch. Whoops. Those two stuck together. So there they are. So I'm going to turn this down quite a lot because you will see they are quite dark in colour. They <laughs> look pretty dark. That you can see is, is steam. It's not smoke. It could look like smoke. It looks like I completely burnt them. 
<laughs> the joy of YouTube, hey? <laughs> right, so I'm going to pop those over. Um, and I am going to do this again. I wasn't going to make the second batch for you, but because I've overcooked them, I am going to, to do that. So, so what I do for the second lot to finish up the mixture is do my five sprays like that. that round a little bit and then pour again and again you can hear the sizzling but it's not quite as loud this time so that's reassuring but like with everything in life sometimes things turn out better than others really and it's about being kind to ourselves isn't it there we are right so that's that pop that over there and again this is the moment i think where if you do end up with scrambled egg this is where this can happen really so what i think is just stand back <laughs> just allow the pancakes to cook and yeah this is a tad and actually even then I, I've turned it up a little bit so it's a bit quicker for, for your benefit as you're watching but actually if they take a bit longer to cook it's kind of allow them to, to do that really This recipe I make half the quantity that it suggests in the Weight Watchers app, in the Weight Watchers recipe. And I find the, the recipe is actually for four servings. And I find half of it, which would be two, I, I find that actually I can get three breakfasts out of that. I prefer to have these for breakfast. Some people like to have them for a pudding. It's individual really. What's great about this is there isn't any added sugar in it. It's got bananas in it for the, the sweetness. So these are starting to bubble now. Would you like to have a look? There we are. You can see just a few bubbles there. Whoops. Oh, one of them's kind of lost its shape a little bit as I did that, but never mind. And so now I can see that they're ready. If they've kind of merged together, which some of them have here, I just use this just to separate them before lifting out and turning over. So that's that one. I can't lift these ones up quite as highly because they're not as well cooked as the previous ones. When I say well cooked, I mean well done. This is more what I was aiming for. So literally just one at a time. You're aiming to put them back from where they come from. Sit. And the middle one. Might be a bit more difficult to fit in. There we are. So I'll just show you what these look like. So this is more the colour really that works best I feel. So I put them back on the heat pan to cook the other side. One of the things I love about this is the texture. They are very similar to cake texture. And for those of us who like a bit of cake, <laughs> this is an ideal recipe. And as I say, it doesn't actually have any sugar in it. The Weight Watchers version suggests that you, or you can add agave syrup once they're ready. Uh, and actually that is something that, that I do sometimes, not always. And I have mine with plain yoghurt, Greek style yoghurt I quite like, and plenty of fruit. Different fruit every day, doesn't have to be the same fruit at all. A bit like eating the rainbow, you've probably heard, gives us more chance of getting all the nutrients we need. So these ones, I put some of them on a plate to eat immediately, which is what I'm going to do, and some of them on the wire rack. What I then do is once they've cooled, I put them in the fridge and for tomorrow's breakfast, I'll get some of them out, put them on a plate, put them in the microwave 
40 to 50 seconds and super quick breakfast. So I'm going to turn that off now and yeah, pop these ones onto here. This one's sticking a bit because they did break up. And I think with this as well, it's probably important to not to try too hard, if that makes sense. But I think cooking, well, like everything really, we get the, the best results when we're in that state of flow. We're feeling relaxed, we're really enjoying what we're doing, and we're, we're feeling reasonably confident that we can do it, imagining in our mind nice shapely pancakes so i hope that this helps you and i'd love to hear how you get on with your pancakes as i say this video inspired by claire's suggestion or made in response to claire's suggestion really a request so claire i hope it's been helpful i really do and lots of different things in there i'll just do a quick recap so what I would say is the, the starting point, the recipe, get a recipe which is reliable and Weight Watchers ones really are. And then when you're mixing it, you can get a bit of air into it. I think that can help. Putting it in or making it in a jug, which is what I do, or another way of pouring it into a jug so that you can actually pour it or ladle it into the pan. Getting the pan at the right temperature. And again, yeah. That's <laughs> struggled a little bit with that on this video, but it worked out okay in the end. Using gas is seems to, to work, definitely. And the implement for turning over the pancakes, a thinner one, definitely at the edge so that you can very easily get it underneath the pancake. Having given the pancake plenty of time to cook and come together, so that when you turn it, you are turning a, a whole thing like that. And in terms of, of this, I, <laughs> before lockdown, I had bought, in fact, I had three of those in my drawer. One was a metal one, which I didn't ever use, which has now gone off to the charity shop because it depends on what kind of pans you do, you have and what kind of cooking you do. Hopefully somebody <laughs> who is able to use that has, has found that. And I also had, a very lovely kind of tealy coloured silicone one which I can't even remember where I got it from actually but I was yeah anyway you don't need all the stories <laughs> I was with my mum and aunt in case you're wondering and uh, it was a, a three pack of utensils and a beautiful colour this kind of colour actually that matched my kitchen floor so <laughs> before lockdown that was the world maybe, it was like, oh, they look nice, I'll have to have those. And I mean, they, they were very nice, very quality, very good items. But what I found was that the, the fish slice, what I call them, I'm not sure what other people call them, it was very thick because of the silicon. And actually, it, it, you couldn't really get it underneath things to kind of turn them over and pick them up. So, so again, that, that three set of silicon utensils also is now in the charity shop or hopefully has found a new home and as i say i'm sure for, for some things they probably are useful but i'm wondering if that might be when i think about this one of the key things that perhaps is impacting people when they are making these so i'm as i say i'm really curious i'd love to know i've had a lot of thoughts about what i am doing differently to other people that have been struggling with this so uh, so do let me know and yeah there's all things that that we can share really some things work for me people talk about scrambled eggs well i have to say there's been a few occasions where i've gone to make an omelet and i've ended up with scrambled eggs so i uh, i feel your pain <laughs> it could happen can't it <laughs> If you like this video, do remember to give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. And if you're interested in videos around well-being, relaxation, do subscribe to my channel. I'm building up my channel and just while I'm saying that, very welcome to all my new subscribers. So I'm rambling a little bit now, so I'm going to stop.
<laughs> but thank you very much for, for watching. Bye for now.